So let's talk about potty training. Potty training, I have to admit that when it comes to that process, there's no right or wrong way to potty train. What I can say just in my experience is that usually when you know a child is ready for potty training, the child is usually going to be dry throughout the evening, meaning overnight. Once the child, and that's pretty much a natural development, I honestly don't put a number on it. I can't say that by age two, your child must be potty trained. I do think it's a developmental readiness uh, perspective. And I've seen children potty trained before age two and, and you know after age two. And I just feel that that's one major indicator. When that child starts to sleep through the entire night and they are dry, their body is indicating that readiness. Of course, sometimes a child may seem ready to potty train, participate in the potty training routine, and be excited about the potty, potty training routine, but what often happens is they then regress a little bit, like, wait a minute, that was fun, but now I don't wanna go. Or, you know, it's almost like a honeymoon period. You think, oh, they want to go potty, you know, each time, and then when you start to have the expectation, oftentimes they will kind of retreat and go back a little bit. But uh, one thing I can say is, once they're sleeping through the night and they're dry, that's your first indicator. So I would suggest that that's when you start. Um, you start uh, when they wake up, start sitting sitting them on the potty, just sitting them on there every single time when they wake up because usually the, pee, the urine will just come out. Um, and when a child is potty training, we do not ever say, do you have to go potty? Because oftentimes the child's answer is going to be no. No, I don't have to potty. So as a point, when we're going through the potty training process here at the Vine Preschool, it is just a trip. We take trips to the potty regularly. It could be every hour on the hour. Um, we'll If we know a child may go every 45 minutes, based on those children, we will go as often as possible. We do not go every two hours. That's too long. When they are potty training, we go as often as possible so that it's almost like we catch the experience. It's not like we can predict when they're going to go, but it's almost like when you go that often, you're going to catch it, you know, you, so they'll be sitting on the potty and boom, they'll go. So that's one thing that, you know, I would recommend and that's what we do and it's successful. Uh, I do often really do like to partner with the parent. I just think it's helpful. Um, it's a little bit more difficult when we are potty training at school and it's not happening at home. So usually the parents will come to us and say, you know, this is happening. I think they're ready. And we will usually say, go ahead and start at home. But we will start at school as well because it also is a communal thing. Once they know other children are potty trained, it usually motivates the child to potty train as well. So it is often successful at school, even if there are some accidents at home. And there is one thing that I personally uh, do that not everyone does. And I'm not saying it's right or, or the only way, but I feel that when you are going through the potty training process, that wearing underwear is important. So, you know, years and years ago, we had the training underpants that had the vinyl on the outside and the terry cloth on the inside, and it protected the clothing. And of course, now they have the, invent the invention of pull-ups and, you know, those things. But I just think that there's a process of needing to feel the wetness. And when you're wearing diapers and um, pull-ups, and I don't want to say name brands or anything like that, and it's nothing, it's no slight to any name brand at all. It's just that they're great. They're all great at, at absorbing. You know, that's the point, the absorbency, right? Well, the child still isn't going to feel the wetness. So I often say, put on the underwear and then put the pull-up or the pamper over the underwear so that the child could feel the wetness and learn how to manage the toilet training that way. You know, feel the wetness and know how to hold it or catch it. Um, and, and it you know, you don't have to necessarily, necessarily change the clothes all the time. But we don't mind having to change clothes, um, but we do that once they are ready and they maybe have one or two accidents uh, a day. But when they're going through the process, I would usually recommend that the parents put the undies on and then put the absorbent diaper or pull up over the underwear so that they, they can feel the wetness. And 
you know, when you're taking them regularly like that, they're going to be successful. You cheer, you do the potty dance, you sing, whatever. But we don't bribe. Uh, we don't bribe with candy or anything like that because this is a life skill. The children need to know the skill. So it's no need in bribing them because this is something they need to do in life. So instead, we will cheer. I mean, we do sticker charts. That's something we can do. But it's not like, oh, if you go, we'll give you a sticker. It's, oh, you went, you can have a sticker. Not, you know, not like if you do this, then you do that. So we found that it's been successful and, you know, children um, are potty trained. It can be the potty. It could be the potty seat. Sometimes we feel that some children like one potty seat over another. Really, whatever makes them feel comfortable, because I think, like I've said in the past in other videos, they need to feel secure. So if sitting on a soft, cushy potty seat makes them feel better than on the potty itself then fine we like using the potty seat on top of the toilet that's our preference over the smaller potty just because again that's real life but the potty seat keeps them stable um so that's you know pretty much how we go through the potty training process but like i said this is not the answer this is just one perspective and i could talk numerous times and give numerous um explanations about different ways to potty train but that's just potty training for us in a nutshell Going often, not asking do they have to go because they're going to say no, making it a trip, making it uh, not an option, something that we do every day, all day, and you're going to find success. Um, and we don't expect the children to say, I have to go potty. They're still really young. They're having too much fun. We can't expect them to tell us when they have to go, not at that early stage. So I think maybe I'll do another video, not right now, but um, maybe I can put together something um, on when they can tell you. But to be honest, just in my experience, I wouldn't expect a child to tell us that they have to potty until they're like well over three and going into the eight to age four. Because I mean, I have to speak for myself. My daughter's four and she still won't always tell me when she has to go. She doesn't have accidents, but she'll hold too long. So, you know, I still have to say, let's go let's go to the, to the potty and she's four. So really, I don't ask. Let's just take them. Even when you go out, what's the point? If they're having fun and they're out, they're not even in their normal routine, I would not say, do you have to go potty before you get in the car for a long ride? Just take them. Anyway, I'll talk to you later. Thank you for listening. Take care. Bye-bye.